We have a pretty good sample size of every first round pick to hand out final analysis and grades. Just an incredible season, well-rounded season, amazing year for a rookie at one of the hardest positions in the NFL to play. I think he's defensive rookie of the year. The 2023 class had plenty of surprises, disappointments, and guys who came completely as advertised. Let us dive into our final grades for all 31 NFL 2023 first round picks. Number 1. Bryce Young F. We aren't solely blaming Young for his first year struggles. David Tepper is officially the new worst owner in football with Dan Snyder now gone, and the lack of weapons around Young, coupled with an atrocious offensive line, did not help matters whatsoever. Still, the Panthers sold the farm to trade up and get Young. You would like more than a 2-14-0 record, 59.8 completion percentage, 11 touchdowns, and 10 picks. Number 2. CJ Stroud A+. The Texans better send the Panthers a giant gift basket of thanks for taking Young over Stroud. Houston took the Ohio State QB at number two and immediately reaped the rewards. Stroud threw for 4,108 yards, 23 touchdowns, and only five interceptions, leading Houston to an unexpected AFC South Division crown in year three of a giant rebuild. Number three, Will Anderson Jr. A+. Plus. The Texans gave up a giant package to Arizona for the number three pick, which they used on the top defensive player of this class. Like Stroud, the Texans saw grade A production from the get-go. Anderson Jr. tallied seven sacks and finished third in ESPN pass rush win rate among edge rushers, behind only Micah Parsons and Miles Garrett. Number 4. Anthony Richardson B. Richardson was limited to four games in his rookie year due to several injuries, having required season-ending shoulder surgery in October. But for the brief action we saw, he sure dazzled in Indianapolis. With Richardson returning next year, the Colts have all the pieces to actually win the AFC South. Number 5. Devin Witherspoon A+. The Seattle Seahawks were among the bigger disappointments this year, but their prized rookie corner does not fit under that category. Pro Football Focus graded Witherspoon, who had 16 pass defenses in just 14 games, at 84.1 on the year. He was one of PFF's top-graded run-stopping defensive backs, morphing into a unicorn on an otherwise underwhelming Seattle D. Number 6. Paris Johnson Jr. C-. We felt like Arizona reached for Johnson here at number 6, and he certainly proved the naysayers correct with a very lackluster rookie campaign. Per PFF, the former Ohio State star allowed 8 sacks and committed 12 penalties on 1,130 offensive snaps. He finished with a grade of 60.1 on the year, highlighting the fact that there is still plenty of room for improvement. Number 7. Tyree Wilson D-. Wilson played in all 17 of the Las Vegas Raiders' 2023 games, but didn't start in any of them. He played just 44% of the club's defensive snaps, recording 3.5 sacks and one fumble recovery. PFF had Wilson graded at a very disappointing 47.1 on the year, but it's kind of hard to fault him too much after seeing limited action as a rookie. Bigger things are certainly in store for 2024, and working alongside Max Crosby can only help Wilson to grow. Yes. Hey. <laughs> Number 8. B. John Robinson, B+. Robinson stuffed the stat sheet, finishing with 1,463 yards of offense and 8 touchdowns. But as we warned you, the Atlanta Falcons didn't at all need Robinson. They already had a 1,000-yard rusher in Tyler Algier. Robinson's all-pro level talents didn't move the needle at all for Atlanta, who finished 7-10 for the third straight year. And that cost Arthur Smith his job. But the bottom line remains that Atlanta needs a quarterback. Number 9. Jalen Carter, A+. Carter was a great value pick for the Philadelphia Eagles in number 9 overall. He had 6 sacks and 2 forced fumbles in a rotational role while finishing with an elite PFF grade of 89.0 on the year. Carter was one of the few bright spots on a Philly D that tremendously underperformed in the regular season. Number 10. Darnell Wright C. Wright was a serviceable starter for the Chicago Bears in year 1, at least as a run blocker. But he had plenty of struggles in pass protection, allowing 7 sacks and committing 11 penalties on 1,127 offensive snaps. But most rookie offensive linemen endure their fair share of struggles, so this wasn't exactly surprising. They moved Chris Jones, put him on Darnell Wright, and that's just a tough matchup for any offensive lineman, let alone a rookie. Number 11. Peter Skoronsky, C. 
Skoronsky was the consensus top offensive tackle in the class, so this initially felt like a great value pick for the Tennessee Titans. Skoronsky had plenty of ups and downs as a rookie, though, and the Titans eventually moved him to guard. He allowed five sacks and 863 offensive snaps and was awfully inconsistent in the run blocking department. Number 12, Jameer Gibbs, A+. This pick was widely scrutinized at the time, but hindsight allows us to tip our hats to the Lions for a genius selection here. Despite missing two games and despite playing less snaps than David Montgomery, Gibbs finished with 945 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns. He finished with 1,261 yards from scrimmage and 11 total touchdowns. Number 13, Lucas Van Ness, C+. The Green Bay Packers had enough pass rushing depth when they took Van Ness at number 13 overall, so the pick was a bit of a head scratcher at the time. But Van Ness had a solid all around rookie year for a guy who only saw one third of the pack's defensive snaps. He had four sacks and provided some valuable depth in the run stopping department. Number 14, Broderick Jones, B. Jones was one of the best first year offensive linemen this year, providing stability on a Pittsburgh O line that has endured plenty of changes and combinations over the last three years. Thanks to his superb run blocking, Najee Harris again hit 1K rushing while helping Jalen Warren rush for a career high 784. Number 15, Will McDonald IV, D minus. Hindsight is 2020, but boy, did the Jets blow it by not taking an offensive lineman here. They had enough pass rushing depth and really didn't need McDonald for starters. McDonald played less than fifth of the Jets defensive snaps in the 15 games he was available for and finished with just three sacks. Number 16, Emmanuel Forbes, D minus. A very forgettable rookie year for Washington's new cornerback, to say the very least. Forbes was benched twice early in the commander season and was picked apart time and time again in coverage. Per pro football reference, Forbes yielded a 105.3 passer rating when targeted and allowed three TDs in coverage. A renowned ball hawker in college, Forbes also had just one interception in year one as a pro. Number 17, Christian Gonzalez, A. Gonzalez was playing lights out before unfortunately suffering a torn labrum that ended his season after just four games. But what a first impression Gonzalez made for an otherwise miserable New England Patriots team. The Oregon product had three pass defenses and one interception, and PFF had him graded at 80.8 .8 before his injury. Number 18, Jack Campbell, C+. This was another highly criticized pick at the time, but Campbell exceeded expectations in year one for the Lions. Campbell had two sacks and 95 combined tackles and a limited role on defense. PFF also gave him a stellar run defense grade of 75.9. Campbell is a key reason why Detroit finished as the number two run D behind only Chicago. Number 19, Kalijah Kansi, D. At first glance, four sacks seems pretty dang good for a rookie defensive tackle, but the data paints another picture for the new Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Kansi finished with a woeful PFF grade of 46.6. He was supposed to strengthen Tampa Stout run D, yet PFF graded him at a miserable 29.8 in the run defense. So much for forming a dynamic interior lineman duo with Vita Vea this year. Number 20, Jackson Smith and Jigba, B+. JSN was never gonna post eye-popping stats in Seattle's rush-heavy offense as a rookie, not to mention that DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are Seattle's two best receivers. But Smith and Jigba was better than expected as a rookie, hauling in 63 catches for 628 yards and four touchdowns. His defining rookie moment? The game winning TD in the final minute against the Eagles on Monday Night Football in Week 15. Number 21, Quentin Johnston, F. Big miss here for the Los Angeles Chargers, who got very little out of the former TCU star this year. Even with Mike Williams missing most of the year, and even with Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler missing considerable time, Johnston failed to step up and produce with Justin Herbert and company. Johnston had just 38 receptions for 431 yards and two touchdowns. That included five outings with 10 receiving yards or less. Yeah. Gross, we know. Number 22, Zay Flowers, A+. Plus. There it is, finally a true number one wide receiver to help Lamar Jackson elevate the passing game in 2023. Flowers had a phenomenal rookie year for the Baltimore Ravens, tallying 77 catches for 858 yards and five touchdowns. With Mark Andrews missing seven games, Flowers stepped up big time in the Ravens passing game and helped Jackson put together another MVP season. Number 23, Jordan Addison, A+. Plus. Addison wasted no time cementing himself as the perfect number two receiver to Justin Jefferson. The USC product finished with 70 receptions for 911 yards and 10 receiving TDs, tied with Sam Laporta for the most among all rookies. Number 24, Deontay Banks, B. Banks had plenty of struggles, but also plenty of flashes for the New York Giants in what was an overall disappointing year for Big Blue. Though Pro Football Reference had Banks down for 606 yards and four TDs allowed in coverage, he also allowed just a 55.2 completion 
completion percentage and an opposing 79.6 passer rating when targeted. Number 25. Dalton Kincaid, C+. All things considered, Kincaid was a pretty fine weapon for a Buffalo team that was hot and cold all year long. He caught 73 passes, 29 of them being first downs, for 673 yards and two touchdowns. Kincaid should only get better as he develops more chemistry with Josh Allen. Number 26. Motsy Smith, D-. This was another questionable pick, since the Dallas Cowboys were loaded in the front seven. And sure enough, Smith underwhelmed as a rookie with one sack and three QB pressures and a limited role on defense. Per PFF, Smith had a miserable 34.9 run defense, which proved to be one of Dallas's few weaknesses this year. Number 27. Anton Harrison, C-. The Jacksonville Jaguars pass protection let Trevor Lawrence down far too often this year, and Harrison's up and down play as a rookie didn't exactly help matters. Harrison committed seven penalties and allowed five sacks on 1,112 offensive snaps. He only doesn't grade lower because there were some hot stretches where he looked like a future pro bowler. Harrison, like his other fellow rookie linemen, has a long way to go in developing as a quality starter. Number 28, Miles Murphy, C. Murphy didn't make as much of an impact on Lou Anarumo's defense as many had expected. But of course, it was hard for him to do much of anything when the Bengals only played Murphy for 28% of their defensive snaps. Murphy had just three sacks and a limited role for Cincinnati. Hopefully, he gets a little more playing time moving forward. Number 29, Brian Breesey. C. Breezy showed promise with six pass defenses and 4.5 sacks as a rotational player, but he was downright awful in run defense. Despite the decent stat line, the PFF had him ranked at 45.5 on the year. If Breezy is to grow into a star, he is going to have to refine his game as a run stopper. Number 30, Nolan Smith. D. Smith played all 17 games for the Eagles, but only saw 188 defensive snaps, playing most of his rookie year on special teams. He had one sack and garnered a lackluster PFF grade of 50.2. Smith didn't do a whole lot in his limited role as a rookie, but he should be a starter in 2024, with several Eagles linebackers and defensive linemen headed either to free agency or retirement. Number 31, Felix and DK Uzama, D. It was rather surprising to see the Chiefs use another first-round pick on the defensive line, given that it was already a massive strength. Anudike Uzama had just half a sack in 17 games, seeing only one-fifth of Casey's defensive snaps. Hindsight is 2020, but boy, they really could have used a receiver here. But who do you think was the best and most disappointing NFL rookie of 2023? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.